So hello and welcome everyone. I'm Anupriya Pandey from Ink Feathers Publishing. And today we have with us the author of The Phases of the Moon. Uh, he is a 16 year old writer and uh, I won't talk much about the book because I really want to know the concept, the ideas and the thoughts behind this beautiful concept because I, I genuinely love the concept and the title and the way the book is divided into five phases. So uh, I would like to begin the interview by asking your story, Ismail, because that is what I do. The first question of my interview is always to know the, about the person, about the interview. So I would really want to know your story. How has life been so far? And like every, all of us have a story, like we carry a story with us. So what is your story? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so hello, I'm Ismail, I'm 16 and I'm like every other teenager and I obviously have like ups and downs in my life. But uh, I think ever since I was really small, I think emotions is something that I felt really strongly and I felt it in very extremes. Like I would either feel too much of it or I wouldn't feel them at all. And sometimes it's not a very good thing. Sometimes it's a really good thing. Um, and I think the concept behind the whole book was that even, even when it wasn't there, even when I couldn't feel anything, it would, it would still come back. And this whole feeling of being trapped in this cycle of emotions is what I wanted to bring out because obviously the moon goes through phases and it's like you can see half of it and then you can see the entirety and then at one point you can't mm. see anything at all. But then the moon is still there, nevertheless. And I think that metaphor really captured my entire life from when I was, I think, 5 to 10 to 12 to 16 now. Um, mm. So yeah, I think that's the concept. Uh, and I'm also really passionate about things like feminism and the environment and the LGBTQ community and advocating for things like that. And I think um, over the years, I think writing has given me the freedom and the opportunity to express that intensity and like the weight of those emotions in one way or the other I think if I had to give a blanket statement of what it would be okay so like coming back to the title of your book like I said that it is divided into five different phases like there are five phases of the moon so how do you relate that with your own life like like uh, you only tell the title uh, of all those like the title of the different parts of your book and yeah. how do you relate those things with your own life okay so i think um so the titles are new moon um waxing gibbous full moon waning gibbous and new moon again um so i think i'll start with new moon first so new moon is basically all the emotions that i felt when I didn't feel anything, but they were still there and you didn't really need to feel them to know that they were there. And these were like really intense and really, like really light. You didn't really need anything, a, a punch to actually feel them. And I think that's what the first new moon is about. And the themes of waxing and waning gibbous are quite uh, um, similar because I wanted to capture the conflict um, because I think um, as vulnerable as a person that I am, I'm also timid, but I'm also strong at the same time. And I think when you see the moon in halves, I think that's, you can really like relate to that. So I think that's what uh, the gibbuses are. And I think the full moon is everything, like all my feelings just spilled out without holding back. And I think mm. this that, that phase is what will make people feel the most. I think that's what I hope it would. Um, it definitely did for me. Uh, and the final new moon is basically like this amalgamation of everything that I've been through and that you come back to the same original, but you're more grown and you're more mature and you know how to deal and understand these feelings that have been a mess so far. It's coming mm -hmm. back. And then you close the book and then when you have to open it again, you realize that sometimes in life you might have grown but then you have to restart from the beginning yeah and right. that's that that was basically the concept of my phases and the entire like book yeah 
yeah i noticed that that is a beautiful concept and i was so excited to talk to chat with you because one i mean you must have heard this a lot of times that you are young and you have already published a book so i won't uh, get much into that but then the society that we live in we really we we uh, hear and we experience that men or boys are not able to express or deal with emotions so much and your book is all about emotions all about different kinds of emotions so like why do you think that is that thing is there in our society and what difference you experienced in your own life was that you're bringing up or whatever that was can you talk a little about that yeah i think definitely when i was little i really understood that there was like this whole stigma on men and like being strong and everything because while i was growing up apart from my dad i didn't really have any male friends or male role models to look up to it was always either females or women or girls and i think that really pushed me into you know being more uh, yeah being more open to what i feel and i and the reason why i think it's there is because i think culture and like our ancestry has just shaped our minds and our hearts in such a way that that isn't really that has you know specific gender roles associated to certain gender identity and we are all expected to follow them but absolutely is the 21st century and i think it's about time we break these norms and we get out into the world and actually show who we are because even in my i think in my dedications i only have like one or two men that i have actually uh, a mention with one is my dad obviously because as emotional as i am he is too but he's not very expressive about it yeah, right. and yeah, and i think oscar wilde is also has been a huge uh, inspiration for me in terms of like the right not just writing self but the way he lived and how courageous he was i think it was just i don't know i find so much mm. comfort in like this and what he did was really great um but yeah i think that for me personally it's really important that i stand out from the rest of the crowd not in a way that that disrespectfully stands out but in a way that you know showcases that emotions is a good thing and i'm not trying to do it for attention i'm doing it because i express it and i want to i want to just be free and be liberated with what i feel i think that's 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 what i want to do i'm so happy that you are doing that and like you are able to do that actually because nobody <laughs> like uh, no boy or no man is actually being less expressive consciously you know they mm-hmm. have actually been brought up like that or they have seen the other men around them just that way so I'm so happy and that was one of the reasons I was so uh, excited to interact with you. So, uh, how did you got into writing? How okay, has so, your writing journey been? Yeah, so I think when I was there I started reading very early, like a too early my mom would say. And when I was little I think by like 9 or 10 I would be reading classics like Charles Dickens and it was It was a normal for a kid like me to do that because I was really young. But mm. that was the reading part and I think when you read you automatically want to write. I think that was it for me. Um but apart from that when I was small I really felt like my emotions were kind of suppressed. Not because anybody wanted to suppress them because I felt that they needed to be suppressed because as I told you I either felt too much or too little and it wasn't always a good thing. and when i couldn't really share them with anyone because i thought it would make me feel too open or too closed mm-hmm. off i mean on the extremity i i think taking out like a piece of paper and a pen and i was like five when i started and i would submit for like my school uh my school newspaper stuff like that like small things like that and then when i got to like 11 or 12 I really didn't strike me that writing was a big part because I really thought when I was little that everybody had some sort of creative outlet and I didn't really know how special it was until I was maybe like 11 or 12 when I realized that actually I really really like writing and I think if you speak about me the three things that they would say 
about me is number one, I love writing. Number two, I love music. You can see the piano behind okay, me. Okay, yeah, I was seeing that. I love your background, actually. Thank you. Uh, the tapestry, I got it, hmm. I think, from Jeff. Sure, oh, but, yeah. okay. And number three, thank you. Uh, number three is that I want, um, I want to become a doctor. So these three things are like what defines me. And I mm. think that really, that, that like 11 to 12 when I was that age, I think these three things really like mm. defined who I was. Mm. And that's when I really, really got into writing. But again, like showcasing myself was something that I was never used to. I was too scared. I'm going to be I, honest. Yeah, I can actually relate to that. Because mm. yeah, when we, are, when we feel too much, we tend to restrict ourselves from opening up. But then 100%. it is also a good thing, you know, to not feel anything. If if I have to choose between not feeling at all and feeling too much, I would always choose the latter. Me too, me too. <laughs> so yeah, like, so, huh, yeah, go on. Yeah, so, and I think that was just for a while until I was like 16. And then when I just turned 16, I think in like May of this year or something, my friend hosted a poetry competition and I someone urged me to take part and I was like I haven't showed my work to anyone in like I think seven or eight years so why not so I decided to go for it and and then that's where I got my confidence from and I was like I need to take this opportunity and hmm. I best. relate so much with your journey because you know in the lockdown only I hmm. started participating in some uh, open mics and spoken poetry and then I realized that I love this part of me so much and I completely changed the field that I was uh, in at that point of time so I, I completely understand that and now at such a young age you already have your book published how does that feel did you ever thought that uh, did you ever think you you will like go into the publishing process you'll get your book published and all that so how did that happen Honestly, if you'd spoke to me about this a year ago, I would probably laugh because I really never thought I would. Um, I, I feel overwhelmed, really, that actually my book is out there and anybody can buy it and view it and like read it and have an opinion on it. But that's what scares me most. Um, mm -hmm. But honestly, with like work and everything, I don't really, I haven't really had time to sit with it completely. That with the fact that it's actually out there. But yes. Sometimes it does hit me that, yeah, I'm actually a published author now, I have my own book. And it's a little scary, but I think it's a good type of scared. It's not a bad type, it never will be. So, yeah. like scared of what? People having opinions on your writing? Or people knowing you too much? People knowing me too much, really. As a, as a person, I don't really care much for other people's opinions about my work. I mean, I do respect them, but I will never feel bad if they have something critical to mm. say about it but I think that opening up in like the, it was a spur of a moment decision to actually publish to actually think that people can read me like a book literally now <laughs> is a thing it's a little <laughs> bit over to actually yeah writing yeah. is and all your poems like some of your poems I did read so it is like there is a part of you in them so it's too, some of them are too personal, so I can understand that fear. Uh, would you like to tell something about your book, like something that you want the viewers to know? I think that, I think that if, if you want to start reading poetry, my book now might, it might not be the best, because I think there's a lot of intricacies that are involved. But definitely, if you do want to venture into like a little bit of modern poetry or something that will make you cry, then 100% you can definitely look at my book. Um, another thing that I would like to say is that, I don't know, I think you should go chapter by chapter. Don't miss mm -hmm. a poem. Every poem has its like place. And I feel like a lot of poems are connected with each other. Um, I would also like to say that not all the poems in here are about me. Most, a lot of them are about people that I've made up, people that I've created when I felt really alone. Um, classmates that probably don't even know I exist, things like that. So it's about a lot of people. Like, I don't, if, if you're listening to this, then probably there's something about you inside. That's what I always say. 
So, hmm. yeah. That's so sweet. <laughs> so, like you said, uh, Oscar Wilde inspired you. So, was there some other people, some famous poets or your life experiences? You have already talked about them a bit. So, what hmm. the, the rest of things that inspired you into writing poetry? I think in terms of writing, like the content and the style and like um, f- like all the stylistic things, I think Taylor Swift is a very, very big um, influence. I think that's because I've grown up with her and since I was a little kid, I was like, oh, I really love Taylor Swift and I've made it a part of my personality now. Um, so I think you can really see that. Um, but otherwise, I really like to take inspiration from um lord also like i think her language and like the little bits that she connects between two different songs mm. like that i think that's um, evident um another thing that i would say is i'm also in terms of like content wise i would say i'm inspired by myself and my imagination my creativity obviously but mm-hmm. also my mom is a very very big inspiration to me um, because I think part of the reason why I feel so extremely is because of her and I've seen her grow up yeah also. I think my mom is a big role model in my life um, yeah I think that's pretty much it I'm very selective with what I choose to put and what I don't choose to so yeah I couldn't help but notice in your acknowledgement there were mostly women mm-hmm. so like women have really inspired you so far would you yeah. want to tell a little bit about that? Oh, 100%. I think we re- we as a society really underestimate the power of women and what they can actually do. And obviously that's changing now. But I think 100 years ago even, I think the situation was much, much different. Um, and for someone like me who who's found comfort in only women for the past 16 years basically of my entire life, if I was only surrounded by men, then I wouldn't have been able to publish this book or I wouldn't be the person that I am today. And it, it doesn't matter if it's my mom or my sister or my friends. Mm-hmm. I think that as a whole, as a person, I really respect what women do and how they need to be more acknowledged. Because sometimes I think about all these uh, uh, all these women poets in history who've probably gone and seen because of some man who was, you know what, you weren't good enough. So mm-hmm. they never decided to publish their poetry. They probably burnt it, something like that. And that makes me really sad. Um, so yeah, I think it's really important that I acknowledge women in my life as much as men. But I don't really have men to acknowledge apart from my dad. So, so is it possible for you to read something for us right now? Oh, my sure. Um, would you like a short poem or a long poem? Whatever you like. There's no time limit here. Okay. One second, then I will figure out one that I really, really like and read it. Okay, so this one is pretty long, but I think it's um, my one of my favorites. Um, it's called I Never Told You These Things. I never told you these things. But my eyes cloaked amber skies when we met over your saffron skin. But I promise it didn't need any fixing, anything to make it richer. Your all teethed grin alone put down the sun and chapped it in the dark for you'd unpromptedly stole all his luster. I waited for you to say hello to me as though I were a one man audience waiting to hear the premiere of the world's greatest symphony. But how were my ears to know this was just the rehearsal? I forget time didn't exist with you and now I am here too early. After months of hearing your radio hum all that became, sounds I woke up for and fell asleep to from a friend and a half away. Your lips must have mistakenly stumbled upon a boulder to say my name. My autumn or barge thought spring when you asked me to cycle with you on an odd winter day. I packed two sandwiches and a bottle of juice to share. I dreamed, I schemed. 
We made it to an aquamarine pond. My giggles got lost in the ripples. Suddenly, it didn't feel unfathomable to just say things I could trust the bayou. Even if the floor I walked on was slippery and in a water so cobalt blue, for once I did not give it company, your gold had muted all the somber stains I was used to. Soon enough, I found joy throbbing sharply at the hem of my throat. My heart ran in circles for the chasm between her and the mind had been closed. Meanwhile, my lips began to quiver pledges, but yours finished them and set them in stone. We break away like luckless lovers, and I glare at you, blatant, vacant. I fear I passed the grief in me that has made for the sun in you to set. But please tell me you hear my mud-smeared soul sentiments, that in this moment you need not be kind with my heart, but please, please be patient. In my debts, I force reconciliation to face what I have done. When your hand evaporated from mine, my despair laughed in my face, the undefeated champion. The silence between us grew like vines on a wall creeping. I slid open my mouth to save you from this morning, or so I kept hoping. But no voice came out, no words, no nothing, because how do I succeed explaining, hesitating as a sign of loving, a symptom of falling? How do I end up convincing you that if I was dying, it's your skin I am seeking to be buried in? But before I could start trying, you said it's late in the evening and that we should get going. But my mind was preparing for apologizing and saying things. But I never told you these things. And so it's you I wound up losing. Thank you. Oh my God. I literally had goosebumps. Oh my God. You're my favorite po poet from now on. It was really beautiful. It was really beautiful. And I don't know why, but I... I was, I was, I felt there was some kind of music in it. Mm -hmm. I guess you. your poetry is inspired from your music also somewhere. Do you 100%. feel that or? Yeah, apart from poetry, I also songwrite, but I'm not quite the singer. So okay. I don't really sing or like sing my songs or anything. But uh, there is like a lot of. Um, musical touches in my poetry. I think a lot of poems have been are poems that have been converted to songs. Um, so yeah, it's really it's nice for you to notice that. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you so much for reading that. And uh, yeah, we are coming at to, towards the end of our interview. So I would want to tell the viewers that uh, Phases of the Moon is now available on Ink Feathers website and also on Amazon. So after listening to this poem, I am very much interested in buying that and I am totally placing my order today. I, I, I am genuinely saying that I love, I love that piece. So uh, is there anything else you would want to tell the viewers? Any message? Um, if you do choose to buy my book, thank you. Um, thank you for choosing to give me your time and like holding my hand. Um, and you know, just sitting with me for a while and talking to me. Uh, and even if you don't, it's okay if you've made it this far into the well. Thank you for listening. Um, and I think stay kind. That's the, that's a really basic thing to say. I think kindness is very common now. So thank you for listening, and please buy my book on Inc on the Incredible website or on Amazon. And yeah, one last question. How was your experience with the whole publishing process with Ink Feathers? Was, did you face any difficulties or was it smooth? No, I think it was pretty smooth. The, there was a lot of communication and I think um, that really helped me. And it was very understanding. They don't, they don't pressure as you can write it. Mm -hmm. The first yeah, book is really a very special one. So that journey is also special, you know. Thank you so much, Ismail, for joining us and thank you for all that you shared. Thank you for having me.